Three things to do before you start your own dropshipping business. Do you have no idea what to sell? Well, keep watching and I'll tell you why that is a good thing. And if you already know what to sell and to whom to sell it, even better. Keep watching and I'll probably save you a lot of money. Hi, I'm William and this is the Dropshipping Report. Are you struggling to get your store up and running or don't know where to start? Come find me at dropshippingreport.com. Before you launch your store, there are a couple of things that you should consider to save yourself a lot of money that you be spending up front on your store that could wait until later. Most e-commerce store platforms will cost you at least $29 a month. And why start paying that if there are some things that you, you need to know first? And if you get those out of the way, then you can take full advantage of those 14 day free trials that they give you. So what should you know before you launch your store? There are three, three main things that you need to know. You can always come up with these after you launch your store, but why not do it ahead of time? So the first thing is, are you going to launch a general store or are you going to launch a niche store? Do you have a store name? What are you going to call it? And is that store name available as a domain name? So is it available? Or will you be able to register it? If you don't know what that means, stay tuned and I'll let you know. So general store versus niche store. What are you selling and who are you selling it to? Do you want to start with the target audience or are you going to start with a product or product line? So what's the difference? So a niche or niche, some people pronounce it, you already know a group of people that can be identified by things that interest them. For example, you could go after the broad niche of dog, you know, so all dogs. You could have a dog store. Or even better, you could narrow it down and have a, a store just for people who own Yorkshire Terriers, for example. Here I put Yorkie. The Yorkshire Terrier, also known as a Yorkie. So those are little things that you need to know. You should know if you pick a niche, you should know the words that that niche uses. That'll help you with your sales. So when you if when you have an idea of who you're targeting or you know what they own like the Yorkshire niche you should already have a good idea of what they buy buy in the stores or buy online then we have the general store so a general store is good if you have no idea who you want to sell to and you don't care and you just want to test all kinds of products to find a product that will sell well and make you money so those are the kind of the two, two options you have when you're starting. And there is a third option. Third option is, and this is the option that I usually take when I launch a store. I have a, a general store. So you start with a general store and you pick like a general store name that could be applied to any niche you want. Then you test multiple niches with that store. So the way I start those is I choose three different niches to start with and I do some research and I find two products for each one of those niches. So I start off with six products, but I only launch one product for each one of those niches. So just for an example, I may choose a dog niche. Uh, I'll just say the cat niche also, and maybe the horse niche. Those three just happen to be three animals, but it doesn't matter. It could be anything. One could be basketball. One could be uh dogs, and one could be water skiing, for example. Three three completely different niches. It does not matter. But what you do is you put the products on the store, all six products. You pick one product for each of the niches, and then you launch ads for those three. And then what you do is you, after a week, you see which one is doing better. And like, for example, in my very first test, I launched three products, and I Two of the products made zero sales, but the third product made enough sales that it covered the cost for both of the other two products. Actually, it covered the cost for all three products. So I actually wound up making money on my very first test. So then what I did was I went and created another store just for that niche. Let's just say it's the dog niche, for example. So I took that dog product, I took the dog products, went and created a dog store, even better, like I said, if you do it for a specific breed, that's even better. And then you have that separate store. You can keep using the general store 
and testing different niches, different products if you want. But then you have your niche store, you have a winning product on it, and it's going to be making money. And you can take the profits from that store to test other products on your general store to keep finding more and more profitable products. But I highly recommend that you, once you find a winning product, you stick with that niche, that winning product, and you build on that. Make that one grow before you go trying to launch another store or another product in a different niche. And nothing compares to actually doing. So no matter what you choose, you could be wrong. But what if you're right? You can sit there and do research all day, but nothing will make you money unless you go out there and you test it out. So do you want to have a big impact? Then you need to use a brandable known, uh, brandable name. Choosing some random lame, uh, lame, there you go. A random name is lame. Right? People are not going to remember it. If you go choose something like trendystore.com, uh, that means nothing to nobody. That could be an okay option if you're doing a general store, but you definitely don't want that as your long-term name. So the second thing that you need after you choose your niche or decide if you're going to do a general store is you need to pick a name. And I have six things here on this slide that will help you uh, pick a good business name. So number one, of course, brandable. So when I say brandable, you know, it doesn't have to be a word that has any kind of meaning. And I'll give you an example here. Look at Xerox, right? Xerox, they make photocopiers. We know that. We associate this name with photocopiers. You know, Xerox could mean anything. It, you're, the name that you choose will mean something to someone when they realize what kind of products you sell and what niche you serve. That's when that brand name will make sense to the people. So you can make up any name you want. It, just, it should be, if you're going to make up something, make it easy to remember. So like you, know, like you can make up Xerox. If you make it easy to remember, it's nice and short. There are only five letters there for someone to remember. It starts with an X and ends with an X, Xerox. Of course, if you hear it, but you don't see it, you might have a hard time spelling it, right? So I gave an example here, easy to remember. You can make something up like pink kiwi. You know, it doesn't mean anything. You know, there, pink kiwi does not exist. But after a while, they could associate that name with your store. So the next thing is easy to spell. Try not to use uh, misspellings of words. And I'll give you the example here, Flickr. So Flickr, they use, they take out the E. So it's F-I-F-L-I-C-K-R. There's no E. So if you don't know, if someone hears the name Flickr, they're going to go in, they're going to type in Flickr into their search engine to try and find it. Or they might try and look up Flickr.com. So if they type in the regular spelling for Flickr.com, they're not going to go to Flickr. To the, you know, the, and that's, an, of course, an old photo website. But that's where you want to try to avoid uh, misspellings. It's also good if you keep it short, like we mentioned before, the word Xerox. You know, another good example is Amazon. You know, the first time I heard Amazon, I was thinking about the, the jungle, you know, Amazon River. And, you know, you have Jeff Bezos. He turned it into a company, Amazon. Now, when people think of Amazon, they think of, you know, a place where they can go buy things online. And that's what we want to do. We want to think of a nice, short Easy to remember name that's easy to spell. Then, you know, you want your the name of your store to be broad, but not too broad. And the reason we want to keep it broad is we don't want to get stuck into selling one type of product. So I'll give you a short, you know, little example here, Lux Lashes. I don't even know if that exists. It may actually be a real store. But when I see that, I think of, I, you know, the lashes. So you sell, you're kind of limiting your store to lashes and accessories for lashes, maybe, you know, curling, uh, lash curlers, stuff like that, or maybe even mascara you could do, but it's kind of limited there. So why not take a step back or step up and call it something like Lux Beauty? So then you can sell all kinds of beauty products. Yeah, you could start with lashes, you know, just do lashes on your store and then gradually test other products and go into other niches within the beauty niche. 
So good idea there. And the last thing I wanted to share, because this is just from a personal example, I an, a, a technique or something that I learned from one of my mentors when selling jewelry is to use women's names. Just put two names, first names together, or you know, just make up a name. So what I did is I kind of thought I was making up an, a woman's name. I picked a first name and I picked a last name and just put them together and bought the dot com. And I I didn't do the search. I went, I, I registered the domain name. I built the store, had the logo built, added the products, started running ads. And then one day I thought, I'm going to go do a search on Google and see where I show up. So I did a search on Google and I found hundreds of sites about a porn star with the same name that I had named my store. So I was like, ah. So my store was nowhere to be seen. Nobody cared about my store when they could be finding this other person with that name, the same name. So let that be a lesson. Before you actually register a name, type in that name in your search engine and see what shows up. You, you don't want any bad surprises later down the road. So after you've picked a, a, a company name or while you're picking a company name, you don't have to do this after. It's good. I do it at the same time. So as I come up with ideas, I'm typing it down to see what's available. So, you know, the domain name, you know, that's what a person types into the browser when they go to look for your your store, right? So a domain name for Amazon is Amazon.com. The domain for Google is Google.com. Those are the domain names, other also known as a URL. So you want to keep those as short as possible. You don't want to make it too long because then people have, if they have to type it out too long, you know, if they have to type out Amazon two day shipping.com, then there's more opportunity for them to, to mess up when they're typing again, right? And then people don't want to type that whole thing in. And they might forget a letter. You know, they might miss a letter. They might add an extra one. And then they never get to your site. So the shorter you keep the domain name and the easier you make it to spell, the easier your customers are going to find you when maybe they saw your ad, but they couldn't click on the link, but they want to go search for it later. Happens all the time. So how do you know if a domain name is available? Well, I'll just I'll give you a little quick uh, demonstration. So you can go over to any uh, registrar you want and you just type in a name. Actually, I want to show you this neat little thing right here. I like to use this for finding uh, company names. So here they give you some examples. So if you pick a niche, like whatever thing, let's just use the same example that we used before of Yorkie, right? So you just type in Yorkie. Just as an example, there are tons of products. So you could go, look at there, Your, go Yorkie. There's already, a, and if it's green, if it's here and it's green, that means the domain is available. So go Yorkie is available. Uh, Yorkie now, it's kind of cool. Uh, free Yorkie, no, digital Yorkie. Yorkie Direct, online Yorkie, Super Yorkie. Look at that. That would be a cool domain name right there, Super Yorkie. And just to show you an example, if you go to a domain registrar, my favorite, I've used several over the years, and I've been buying domains since 2003, and I've changed, and I've the one I've been with the longest now is Namecheap. So I could just type in right here, what was that? Super you come up with a, no, a name that you like, you come over here, you type it in, click on search, and then they'll tell you, yep, it's available. See the check mark right there? $8.88 a year. So it's not even it's not even a dollar a month for a website. You know, the domain name. So these are the things that you can do, uh, you know, before you actually sign up for a an e-commerce platform. So I, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to all the people who have been clicking my affiliate links in the description. I get a portion, uh, you know, an affiliate commission for anybody who signs up with any of the links that I provide. 
And that's what keeps me making the the free, you know, the free training and the free videos that I put up here on YouTube. So thank you all for for your support. So one of the platforms that I recommend for for beginners, so say you picked your niche or you decide to go with a general store, you found a neat short domain name kind of like what we did with Super Yorkie, that was kind of cool, right? You go you register it, go ahead and register it on whatever registrar you want to use. Like I said, I prefer Namecheap.com. And actually, I'll put a link to Namecheap in the uh, description. I will also put a link to that lean domain uh, search website that I use to find uh, really cool domain names quickly. You saw how fast I found something. And I, I had not done that before. So I didn't do that ahead of time before the video. So I had no idea what I was going to find. So the, the platform I recommend for beginners is uh, Shopify. You can start off with that for $29 a month. I, I recommend that if, in, you know, you can add the apps that you add to it do have an extra cost, but you can get started for $29 a month. And here in a minute, I'll tell you how you can actually maybe even get one designed by me for free. So if you considering starting a general store, and you want to start a niche store at the same time, you want to keep both of those going, a great option and a great platform, another one that I use, is right there at dropsolo.com forward slash chq. There you can get uh, three, you can have three stores for the same price. So you can check that one out. And then if you want more of my help, you know, swing by my website over at dropshippingreport.com. And you can sign up for my newsletter. You know, you can, you know, once you get the first message, you can email me. That's a great way to, to reach me is there on the website. So I was telling you before, you know, how you might be able to get one designed by me for, for free, you know, a, a site. I am going to be doing tutorials, Shopify tutorials and uh, CHQ tutorials here on uh, the dropshipping report here on YouTube. And I don't plan on keeping all these stores. I'm going to be giving those stores away. So if you are interested in having me design a store for you, I will do everything, including creating the logo for your store. All I'm going to ask you to do is once, once you get it, you will have to have a, you'll have to pay for the platform. That's it. So when I turn it over to you, the only way they can move it over to your account is if you have an account set up. But once once you have the site, then we can work all that. It's the only thing that you'll have to start picking up the monthly fee for that. So if that interests you, leave me a comment below and tell me, tell me that you're interested in having me design you a store and tell me what niche that you would like to have it built in. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to build these stores in a specific niche. And I'm going to pick the niches based on the comments I see in the in the uh, here on, on YouTube. So pick a niche, drop it in there. I'm going to just pick one at random and I promise it'll be random. I'm not going to play favorites. I will try to I, I won't give more than one store to any one person. So I want to make sure everybody gets one. So if you keep watching my videos, maybe you won't get the first one. Maybe you'll get the second one. Maybe you won't get wait till you get the third one. And, you know, if that doesn't, you can always sign up at my for my newsletter there on my website and, you know, message me there and tell me what niche you might be interested in. And maybe you want to get started sooner. Maybe I'll be able to help you out there. So I just want to thank you. And if you have any questions, leave, please leave them down in the comments. Tell me what niche you picked. You know, besides telling me you want me to build one, maybe you already have your store. Tell me what niche you picked and how it's working for you or maybe what problems you're having with your niche. If you want to send me an email, there's my email address, dropshipreport at gmail.com. And there's my website again, dropshippingreport.com. Swing by. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Be sure and subscribe. And if you want to get notifications when I release new videos, be sure and hit that bell notification and YouTube will let you know. Thank you. This is William. This has been the Dropshipping Report.